Grace, what have you done? Murdered for me on that cross Accused in absence of wrong My sin washed away in your blood Too much to make sense of it all I know that your love breaks my fall The scandal of grace you died in my place, so my soul will live. Oh, to be like you, give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you, forever the hope in my heart. Death. Where is your sting? Your power is as dead as my sin. The cross has taught me to live. And mercy in my heart now to sing. The day and its trouble shall come. I know that your strength is enough. The scandal of grace, you died in my place, so my soul will live. Oh, to be like you, give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you, forever the hope in my heart. Oh, to be like you. Oh, to be like you, give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you, forever the hope in my heart. It's all because of you, Jesus. And it's all. Because of you, Jesus, it's all. Because of you, Jesus, it's all. Because of your love that my soul will live. Oh, to be like you. Give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Forever the hope in my heart. Oh, to be like you. Oh, to be like you. Give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Forever the hope in my heart. Good morning, everybody. So good to be here with you. And isn't Stephen amazing? So we're grateful to have him here today. Um, a few, just a few um, housekeeping items. We have our farewell in the back. You're welcome to visit that at any time during the service. Um, our candle station and our gratitude trellis. Again, if you just feel like you need to get up and show some love, pray for someone, write a prayer, um, you're welcome to do that anytime. Uh, we don't pass a giving basket here, but we do have boxes in the back. So again, we believe that giving is an act of worship. It's between you and God. And so um, if you feel led, you can drop your offering in the box on the back on your way out or again, anytime during the service. Uh, restrooms are through that door over here. Um, I don't know. I was telling the team this morning before we prayed Last week, I felt a little, and I think I said it to you guys, a little like, oh my gosh, Peter's not here, and I got to remember everything, and you know, you're trying to fill these amazing shoes, and then just as we were singing, and I'm like, oh, because Jesus, right? Like, that's why we're here. We're learning to live in love like Jesus. We're showing grace to one another like Jesus. We're coming alongside, and I, I love, and I've said this to you before, and I mean it, you guys have so much grace here, and I appreciate it because it really helps me as I 
learn and grow to just have grace for myself. Um, and so I just want to thank you because I know the expectation is that none of us are going to be here to be Peter. We're all here to do the work of Jesus, <laughs> you know, and, and amazing that we have Peter and Betsy who are still enjoying their vacation and they get to have another day of Olympic trials watching um, today. And they've been having such a great time. And I'm so grateful that they've had this, this break. And um, I just love that, that we do have have someone who we want to be like, right? Because as they live and love like Jesus, we want to be able to come alongside and follow them just like Jesus invited his disciples to do. Um, but again, to recognize like they're Peter and Betsy and they're doing the work of Jesus and they happen to be getting to do that here with us. And now in their absence, that work just continues, right? Because it's really not about us. It's really not about Peter and Betsy. It's about God and the work he wants to do in our community. So um, again, thank you for knowing that and for all the grace that you offer us. And I just hope that right now you can just take a minute to just breathe and relax and let the week go as you are here to recenter and prepare for the next week. Um, we are going to in just a moment, James is going to come up and do Electio. And Peter did share this with me, which I, I wanted to share with you guys. It's the reason that we do the Lectio. But this was just a nice um, definition of what it is. So um, this came from a book that's Spiritual Practice Guides. And it says, Spirit, uh, Scripture is living and active as the Bible reminds us in Hebrews. Lectio Divina is a practice of listening to scripture read out loud while we allow the Holy Spirit's presence to speak to us. When we quiet ourselves and meditate on the text, we allow space to experience God and rest in his love and grace. So I'm going to pray for us, and then James is going to come up and do the reading for us this morning. So God, just thank you again for your love and for your grace. Thank you for opportunities here this morning to just experience your presence and to know that you are living and breathing and moving in and through us. And I just pray that um, this moment on this Sunday morning would be a redemptive moment for those who are here, that it would be a moment of uh, renewal for us and just rest knowing that you are bigger than us and you've got this so we don't have to, that we just have to listen to you and, and follow in your footsteps. And I just pray that this morning um, we would be able to let go of any anxieties, any fears, any troubles that we might have been carrying this week, that we can just lay those burdens at your feet and allow you to fill us as we listen to scripture, as we sing these songs, as we hear a message. Um, that this is our space for you to fuel us so that we can be better humans when we leave this place. So thank you for your love, thank you for your grace, and thank you for this moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So close your eyes if you'd like. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name.
We're going to sing a song that um, I don't know that you know. It's called This is the Day. And the verse, the first verse, I love coming out of Psalm 23. And then we're going to sing, whether the sun will shine, whether the skies will rain, I know that you are good, and this is the day you made. We read a, a passage like Psalm 23 about the good shepherd who leads us besides peaceful waters. And yet sometimes we come in here having just felt like we walked next to the most tumultuous storm we've ever faced. It's going to be like a thousand degrees today. Um, it's not always, doesn't always feel like that. And yet that passage is still true. And God has made this day. So whether it's a thousand degrees or two degrees, or it's just like that sweet spring day that we walk out. Most people are in a good mood in, in April, but uh, here in Patterson and where I'm from in Brentwood, once it gets to this time of year, it's real easy to just walk outside and just be like, oh, why is it so hot? But even on days like today where it's going to be hot, we can stand here and say, we can rejoice because God has made this day. He is good. And even if it's super hot, God is honored in this day and by his people as we come to worship. So let's stand and let's, let's sing this song. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice as we lift his name. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come and rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Whether the sun will shine whether the skies will rain i know that you are good and this is the day you made whether in life or death whether in joy or pain i know this truth remains and this is the day you've made this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice as we lift his name this is the day that the lord has made come and rejoice we will rejoice and be glad in it now i can walk in faith you will protect my way your every work is good and this is the day you made I am a child of yours. You are the one who saves. I am redeemed by love. And this is the day you've made. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice as we lift his name. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come and rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, come and sing your praise, for the Lord now reigns on the throne of grace. Soon is the day. He will bring us home, and we have this hope, for we are his own. This is the day, come and sing your praise, for the Lord now reigns on the throne of grace. Soon is the day, he will bring us home, and we have this hope. For we are his own. This is the day. Come and sing your praise. For the Lord now reigns on the throne of grace. Soon is the day he will bring us home. And we have this hope. For we are his own. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice as we lift his name. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come and rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice as we lift his name. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come and rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come and rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Whether the sun will shine, whether the sun will shine, whether the skies will rain, I know that you are good, and this is the day you made. I search the world. But it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied. Here in your love Oh, there's nothing Better than you Oh, there's nothing Better than you, Lord There's nothing Nothing is better than you And I'm not afraid to show you my weakness my failures and flaws lord you've seen them all and you still call me friend because the god of the mountain is the god of the valley there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, oh, there's nothing 
better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Okay, guys. So this is the moment where we get to get back up from our seats and go and greet someone. Um, again, let's share what brought us joy. Maybe share something that tried to steal your joy and how you overcame it. Um, and just take a moment to... To be, blah, blah, blah. yeah, you know, you know what to do. So just go talk. Just go talk to people. It's fine. Yes. All right. So go ahead.
morning. We're going to go ahead and get started with announcements. So we all can enjoy. Yeah. All right. Good morning. I'll make sure it's on. <laughs> all right. Hello. Good morning. It's great to be here with you all this morning. We hope you all had a great week and enjoyed your joy. Um, one of the things that was part of my joy this week was yesterday, me and my husband celebrated 17 years of marriage. So we got to just have a relaxing day and go to dinner, and then we had to get back because we have our little puppy who decided he wanted to have a little bit of a conniption fit on his tail, so now he's got the cone of shame for a couple days, and he can't get out the dog door, so we have to be there to make sure he gets out, so he goes to the bathroom, so that's what I'm going to be doing right after I finish this, to get back to him so that he can get outside, so, because he's a little drugged up too, so he's not too sure where he's at, so... Well, well, hopefully, hopefully it's only for a couple days, so <laughs> he goes back for his checkup. Um, hopefully received your announcements, okay, your handouts um, with all of our information on it. Um, we're going to go through and t take a look at that. If we missed you, just make sure to raise your hand and we'll make sure that you get one of these. Um, if you're visiting for the first time or have yet to complete one, you can tear off the connection card um, and fill out and fill out the bottom portion and provide your info so we can get to know you as you get to know us. Um, you can volunteer to serve in many different areas and let us know how we can pray for you. Uh, you can just drop that off in the, um, can drop off the connection cards in the um, boxes hanging in the back. Just a reminder, as many of us are gone during the summer months uh, to continue your giving, we are still having our normal monthly expenses. You can drop off um, in the mail slots, or you can mail it, or you can also give online at the website, um, and that is at thegatheringchurch.net. Jesus cultivated three of his most important relationships, uh, his relationship with God, his followers, and in the world. I want to highlight three ways to grow deeper in your relationships. Uh, number one, uh, Mondays are community prayer, so you can come at five in the morning and seek to be in God's presence here in the sanctuary. Uh, two, one of our top priorities for 2024 is everyone meeting in a growth group, uh, anytime, anywhere, anyone, which is two or more people. You pick up the five transformational question bookmarks and invite someone to begin meeting with. And if you want to know more about that, you can see Betsy, Peter, or Kristen about that. And then last but not least, uh, you don't want to miss next Sunday because Frank and Heidi Sanchez will be here um, and our youth life mi missionaries. And a special guest will be sharing with us before they head back to Tanzania. So you want to come and hear the great things that are happening now so we can support them on their, on their way back. Okay, so I'm going to give it to Tiffany. Right. Gathering kids, come on down. It's that time. It's like the price is right, but way cooler. So I have a friend that was here last week, and I actually remember his name. I don't know if any of you remember his name, but I remember his name. And then he brought a friend today. So please, sir, state your name into the microphone so the people will know you. Judah. Molly. All right. There will be a test. Okay, and the reason we do this is because we want all of you to know them, and we want you guys to know them, because to be known is to feel important and loved and cared about, and that's how we roll around here, all right? So before we go, we're going to say a prayer, and you guys get to hang out with me and Miss Kay today. All right. Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you for blessing us with Judah and Molly, and I just ask that you make our time together special and that we can just pour love into them and that they will always feel like this is home and that you walk with them every day of their life. In your name I pray, amen. Blessed. Bye guys, have fun. Um, okay, so really quickly, one more announcement because it 
wasn't in our in the list that got sent to Jen. Grocery Outlet is doing a fundraiser for um, the food pantry. And so it's now and for the next few weeks, they are trying to raise $4,000 for the Church Without Walls food pantry specifically. So if you can do some shopping up there, that would be appreciated. Um, if you know about the food pantry, if you've been involved, if you just want to help out, there will be, um, over the next few Saturdays, there's going to be opportunities for us to be up there and just being present so that they see faces, um, kind of describing how it started and and what we do and how we've been serving an average of 150 families a week. So um, to be able to keep that going. And then Grocery Outlet has donated a lot of food for us already. So just the fact that they thought of us and wanted to continue their fundraising is pretty amazing. So um, again, if you guys would be willing to go up and shop there and support them and spread the word, Grocery Outlet fundraising basically through the month of July, um, that would be really great. And now we have a guest speaker today. So Sabrina, get to come on up. She's been here before. She's amazing. We always love it when she's here. So um, we're happy that she's back. And she figured out how to hold the mic. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and pray for her, and then she can take over. So. Thank you. God, thank you for Sabrina. Thank you for the gift she is to us here. Thank you for her life and her story and the way she uses every ounce of herself to honor you. And I just pray that you would uh, calm her nerves, that you would <laughs> be with her this morning, that you would speak through her, and that you would help us to just have ears to hear what you have for us today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Kristen. Blessed is a person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But her delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law she meditates day and night. She is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever she does prospers. I want to be that tree. I have been that tree before. Reading scripture has been profoundly formational for me. And it's looked differently over the years. 31 years ago, I loved devotional time. I would just read a scripture and meditate on it, think about it, and let it absorb into me. In our pre-service time, Gabriel, he said, I love scripture, one scripture verse in the morning. That's where I started, and that's where I am today. It doesn't matter what it looks like. And then friends along the way nurtured that, and they would give me great books by great authors. They would Somebody gave me this Bible 31 years ago. Then I went to seminary, and that was appropriately disruptive in terms of learning scripture. And it wasn't just about an intellectual exercise. Yes, it was that. Of course it is. We have to understand context when we're reading the Bible. And that's okay. But what it became is something sacred and something worshipful for me. It can be both. It can be intellectual. It can be worshipful. So scripture has been the most profound formational spiritual discipline in my 31 years of being in Christ. And at one point, I got to share a lot and write a lot. I remember one year, God allowed me to have a full year of one child in preschool, and the other made it to afternoon kindergarten when the preschooler would come home and take a nap. And so I had three hours to study, and I did. Because I was in seminary. I studied, but it was 
not just for up here. I was just so in awe of what God can do through Scripture and what he's telling me and us through Scripture. Then I lost that fervor. Through brokenness, heartache, and disappointment and acting out, I was beyond broken. Somebody had thrown me to the floor and stomped on me. That's where I was. I lost the fervor. I'm here to tell you that that is what happened to me. But over time, through that practice of meditating on his word, reflecting, what made it so impactful for me was that reflection. We can't just have it go one ear and out the other. Paul instructing Timothy during his second imprisonment in 2 Timothy 2.7, he says, reflect on these things that the, and the Lord will, he will bring you insight into these. He's telling us to reflect. And this is important because Paul, a seasoned missionary, seasoned prisoner, is talking to shy Timothy and saying, be strong in the grace of Jesus Christ. Endure hardship with us like a good soldier in Jesus Christ. Do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord. And this was in a day where you could be tarred and feathered hung upside down on a cross. That was the way of the Roman world at that time. So I'm saying not just reading, but reflecting. We cannot have what I call a cholera reading of scripture. Cholera is an intestinal disease where things go right through you and doesn't sit in there to nourish. So I don't want to just read it, I want to sit with it and not let it just, I I need it to nourish me because I don't want to shrivel up and die. And unless we allow these words to penetrate, to meditate on them day and night, then we will become a shriveled up person and die. Another thing I love to do is have aloneness. If I'm definitely going through something that is tearing me up, then I love to go hike and be alone, except I hike with Mandisa. I hike with Maverick City Music. I hike with Elevation Worship. Brandon Lake. Go be alone. Quietness. I love to sometimes make dinner by myself and just have it be quiet. Maybe I'll have some music in the background, but I'm chopping and I'm meditating. I'm reflecting on his word. I'm reflecting on how it can be integrated into my life. Scrubbing the floors. Become monk-like. It does wonders for absorbing the truths of scripture. Think about how our relationships are and how scripture can be a help in that for healing, for uplifting. I create order in some section of my house. Oh, I love that. Or my reward for the day is grabbing coffee, getting back in bed, and snuggling or snuggling up on the couch and just being still. Being still is a spiritual discipline. It's a discipline, sister, and I don't have that down, but I am working on it. My new favorite thing right now in being still is waking up in the morning after a beautiful night's rest and just laying there and receiving the rest that God gave me, just receiving it, thanking him for it. That is a beautiful way to start the day. And sometimes with scripture, not sometimes, a lot of the time, there's something new that dawns on us because God can do that. I had a 
recent experience with Romans, reading through Romans, and I had this little, little piece of paper on here that maybe a few years ago I wrote some notes about uh, the blood of Christ. And I started, you know, writing out maybe what I thought the theology was and, you know, not sharing it anywhere because you want to confirm with the Spirit and over time and see how it works into the full testimony of God. And then recently I saw that, because I'm trying to get back into scripture, not trying like, oh, I gotta do it, like there's all this pressure on me. I want to do it, God has given me that desire to want to be that tree again. And I came across this piece of paper and I started going, oh, I wonder you know, what, what my theology is of it now. How do I interpret that? with what I know and do now. And I ask silly questions like, what's up with the blood anyway? And those questions are okay to ask because we're using the correct source to answer them. That's why it's okay to ask silly questions of scripture. God can handle it. So I encourage that. And then going back over time. And one thing I wanna say is, this is why I like Gabe's answer so well this morning because he said, I just take a little bit of scripture and I take that throughout my day. That's what I want us to do. That's what I do. I take a paragraph at a time sometimes. Don't, you don't have to like speed through. This is not like speed reading. If you must go through a book in the year, do it. Do it once. Get it out of your system and then slow it down take a verse or two, work it into your life, work it into your thoughts, into your relationships. That's what I have learned to do. Even in seminary, when I was going through like the Greek translation or the Hebrew translation, that is the part that it was super formational because you're going back to the original. But I took half a verse and I just gnawed on it. Or I took a whole verse, and I absorbed it, I thought about it, meditated, I, I ate those verses up. Sometimes the next day, I would go back over the same verse, and that's okay. That is not the race God is asking us to run. There is no end to the capacity of scripture to speak to the circumstances of our lives. That is for sure. Either the Bible or other sources, other trusted sources of information. This is a discipline. I don't even like to call it that because it's so worshipful that I have latched onto in my journey in Christ, and it has been the most fulfilling. And it has led me to formation, to change. It has allowed me to flourish like that tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever we do prospers when we are sinking ourselves into his word. He has taught me obedience. Better yet, he's taught me a desire for obedience. That's a very different thing. Reading from Sermon in the Mount Studies by Oswald Chambers. I may have shared this last time, but it's okay because I don't mind doing things over and over again because I need the review. There are many things you will find you cannot do if you're going to be concentrated on God. Things that may be perfectly legitimate and right for others, but not for you if you're going to concentrate on God. He is giving me the desire for obedience in certain areas. And I, like Kristen last week, can be an open book. We are humanity. Obedience in abstinence. Wanting to honor God. Obedience in moderation. 
So my energy levels and my thinking are clear. Obedience in toning down anger or cussing. I love, there's a t-shirt. I love Jesus, but I cuss sometimes. <laughs> I don't have it. I want it, but working on it. Obedience and jealousy. Jealousy makes me feel jalousy. <laughs> That's the youth pastor coming out in me. The jalousy monster. It makes you feel lousy. Jealousy. Reading scripture, reflecting, it helps me with my identity. This is a plague in my life. All of my life. I can be, I am part of the Me Too movement, inappropriate to talk about it in this setting. I've recently listed off of offensive comments to Tony and I were having this conversation and I started telling him some things that people have said to me over the years, which are awful. And I'm like, I have to write these down because once they're down on paper, then they're over there. They're over there on paper. I'm not gonna deal with them anymore. It's over the course of my whole life starting from being a teenager. Identity that plagues me, the relationship I have with my father, working on it. Another thing reading scripture has done and reflecting on it and absorbing it is right-sizing my thinking. Jesus says, and Oswald Chambers says, believe on Jesus and out of you will flow rivers of living water. I want to be that tree, that tree. Believe on Jesus and out of you will flow rivers of living water. I want to believe that. I want to be that. So when I say right-sizing my thinking, I have to go in there and say, well, what does believe on Jesus mean? Okay, well, that's when you get down to brass tacks. Where does the rubber meet the road? I was going through a particular hard time with my boss because he can be um, mean. And so I needed to come up with something that I think believing on Jesus means. So he is present. He is alive, able, caring, aware of what's going on. He is with me to the end, with my children, fighting battles that are beyond me, and guiding my decisions. That's what believing on Jesus means. So I have to set my thinking on these way more than a frustrating, demoralizing boss or sad, poor disposition of other people I come in contact with. So that brings me to outflow. The water doesn't just stop at the tree. It keeps on flowing. It nourishes the tree and then keeps on flowing from there on out to nourish other trees. The tree is nourished, and so therefore it nourishes. We don't want to be a dead sea. There are many dead sea type seas, bodies of water in the world. One is the dead sea. It doesn't have any um, uh, obvious outlet where the water goes, so it evaporates and leaves what? Salt. And it makes it super saline. So the salinity content is very high and nothing can grow in that. So if we don't have outflow of the truths of the joy and peace and wisdom that comes out of reading his word and thrives in us in organic ways, 
then the salinity of self is going to build and kill. I don't want that. I, I want it to flow out of me. I have received, so I am going to pass on. One of the ways God has been challenging me most of my life, especially now that I'm single um, and in charge of my own decisions financially, is giving. And I've had to get myself back up to the amount I feel like he is calling me to. But man, looking at my paychecks and all the taxes that get taken out, and then I'm like, okay, what about savings? And he is giving me the desire to go beyond that thinking because he's able, he's aware, he's powerful. He's going to make it happen. So that area of giving is still a spiritual discipline for me. It still takes discipline to do it and then to do it and not look back. Keep moving forward. Right size my thinking. Another way is having an energy of kindness towards people. And this kind of goes hand in hand with the disposition that God creates in us as we're reading his word and we're letting it penetrate. And we're letting it flow to us, through us, and after us. Our disposition, and I thought yesterday, this is a mastery over our emotions. That's, I think, what it comes down to. I could probably talk on this for a little bit longer, but that's how I would like to think about it. And there is, our dispositions can be strong and they can be gentle. We can, there is strength and kindness can be evident in, in one person. And that's what Jesus does when he allows scripture, the power of God, the gospel is the power of God for those who believe on Christ Jesus. That's how he changes me in my disposition. And this leads to me, for me, the fruit of the spirits. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Love, joy, peace, patience. Patience. I mean, these, these the fruit of the spirit, they're not something that um, we read as a nice little list. I get to patience. I'm like, oh, what a sweet little word. That is so neat and nice. But if I read the, uh, uh, another definition of patience, long-suffering, I have it right in my book in Romans because I need to remember this definition by a biblical scholar. A state of emotional calm in the face of provocation or misfortune and without complaint or irritation. See, that patience and long-suffering, they sound like totally two different words, but when you get down to the nitty-gritty of what patience is, long-suffering, it com becomes a completely different animal. I'll say it one more time. A state of emotional calm in the face of provocation or misfortune. Okay, I got that. But then, without complaint or irritation, that is my downfall. I can have emotional calm but I'm, I'm also inside. I'm like, I'm fuming. Maybe I don't have emotional calm. Okay, see, I'm learning stuff right now. So here's the point I'm trying to make. In outflow, you never really know if you're growing in the fruit of the spirits until you come into contact with people. A monk can totally exhibit the fruit of the spirits. Fruit of the Spirit, sorry. But you got to get out in the world. And we have to practice outflow. Which means that I have to really pay attention to fruit of the Spirit. And my disposition. And this is a litmus test for how our time, our quiet time in reading scripture, being still, reflecting on it is having, the impact that it's having on our dispositions. 
I recently had a, hosted a birthday party for Tony, 60 years old, and I was gathering stuff up from Facebook Marketplace, and I met with this one woman who had a misleading claim about the, the lanterns that you put candles in, and you put them in your backyard, and they're beautiful. Um, and so she w was misleading in what she said she was giving with, for the price of what I was offering. And so I drove all the way to Livermore, which is, you know, hour out of my way. Um, that's fine. They were worth it. And I show up, and she's like, she got kind of in my face. She's like, well, you didn't read your email. I said, I, I read it. And she kind of got all, well, let me go show you. And she goes, I'm like, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take two. And it felt good that that wasn't a facade. That was Jesus kind of giving me a test. I'll say that. It's a litmus test. I didn't feel, I, I felt a little bit of, hmm. But I wasn't like, ugh. And I wasn't voicing something mean. I just kept calm. And I was like, yay, I did it. A state of emotional calm in this face of provocation or misfortune without complaint or irritation. Woo, Jesus. I messed up that night on something else. I didn't have that same emotional calm, but that's okay. This tree is growing, baby. And I was okay with that. Because we can flourish. Even in a, in, a, in a time of great sadness or distress, the decisions that I make, which become so much different when you're my age and getting older, and we can flourish. We can be refreshed. There's an infilling in the dry places, that water is going to come in and fill us up. Paul, in Romans, he writes of the love of God. And he says, he likens it to liquid. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Romans 5.5, 5, this is liquid love. It is being poured into our hearts, into those caverns, into the pain, and he's bringing healing and change, and he is empowering us. This is what I want to convey. These are not just words on the page. These are the power of God to change. There's an organic Powerful power that causes real change in us. And it brings real life, joy, and peace. So I here declare we're not calling them spiritual disciplines anymore. We're calling them spiritual enjoyments. Because they're enjoyable. You receive so much enjoyment from them. If you don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm not necessarily receiving a lot of enjoyment from, you know, the money piece. But when I get around the people and the places that I am giving to, I'm like, oh, yes, that is why I'm doing it. So there is joy in it. Just not in the month to month. But I know God is going to provide spiritual enjoyments. Peter, this changed the theme to spiritual enjoyments. He'll listen to it later. So for the sake of remembering, that is, this is where um, my second to last point is remembering. And scripture is the antidote to amnesia, to forgetting. I want to say that the enemy iterates too. The enemy does one thing. If it doesn't have a desired effect, there's an improvement in his tactics, and he does it again. 
And we need to be able to identify that. For me, how he does that is through amnesia. In forgetting the good work, the good words, the good change that God has already done in my life or has spoken into my life. I've told you about the time that there was a, a prophetic word spoken over me at a time where, you know, something about my firstborn and um, his upbringing and the, the uh, probs I had with um, my husband and, and how it affected me and anger and ha, mothering, ugh, stress. So I was spoken... A prophetic word was spoken over me, and it was like Jesus had, she told me things that I knew God was present in all those tearful prayers I had in the middle of the night. Tearful, like bawling prayers for my firstborn. So you would think a person would remember that. And be able to reflect on that. Okay, so I recently had forgotten what it was and kind of going back to that same uh, of, oh, my son and Lord, I needed some relief from this. You know, days and days and days went by. And I'll tell you, Jesus became my best friend that day a couple weeks ago when he helped me remember the truth that was spoken over me from Jesus directly from Jesus through his prophet, this woman in Mexico. And I just fell to my knees. I said, you are my best friend. I felt so alive because he gave me remembrance of something they had already did or done that I needed so I can thrive and flourish and be that tree and be prosperous in my life. Amen, Jesus. Not only the enemy iterates, but I stop reading, reflecting, and remembering. That's the simplest explanation. So that's why we want to continue in our um, enjoyment of scripture and remembering one verse at a time, one paragraph at a time. It doesn't matter. So, as I close, there is no doubt that our souls thirst. They crave living water. Our bodies thirst, yes, we know that. And sometimes the, the symptoms of thirst don't even show up until it's too late. I don't want a, that to happen to me. I want this on my radar. It's it's penetrating water it infills. I love this verse, Isaiah 55, 1 to 3. It says, Ho, everyone who thirsts. This is a New King's James Version. So I changed the ho to yo. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you, you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without price, without money. So it's free. It's free to, to us. It's giving. Despite where we are in our suffering, it's free to us whether there's going to be retirement for me at the end of this journey, I still have this, and this is free, and this is going to be my, my sustenance and substance and all those S words. But hey, it's, it's not free in the sense that we need to spend time in stillness and reflection and fortitude. Can you show that picture, please, Matt? Thank you. Fortitude, when things suck. We have to be running towards his word with all of our might. This is Nia 
Aikens. Wrote it on my hand. This is recently, June 24th, and she is, a, this is an Olympic trials. Peter and Betsy can tell you more about it because I don't know. But her last run, she fell. On this run, somebody else fell and she was in first place. So despite falling, despite things that trip us up, or the messages the enemy tries to give us, we are going to charge forth towards that finish line. And that finish line is not the end of our lives, folks. We charge forth towards it every day. What I like about this picture is Nia, look at the positioning of her body. I mean, I want her abs totally, but she is moving forward. Everyone else is slowing down and saying, forget it. Maybe that's what she did on the race that she ran the last time. Maybe she said, ugh, but we need to get back up, read God's word for us, and become that tree again that is nourished by God's word because that is truth. We're going to transition to communion. And I love this. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he sat down with his disciples and he had a meal. His last meal. Not our last meal. And this is where we are with Jesus. Because he was going to be betrayed, so he wasn't trying to preserve his life. He was giving his life. And that's what I love about it. On that night, he broke bread with his disciples and said, this is my body. I am breaking it for you. What's about to come? This is for you to receive. And this is my blood shed for you. Come receive. We have two servers. Come receive the gift that Jesus is continually offering us. Just like the word of God is not just words on a page. These are elements of his body, and God does something sacred here. Let's come and receive. You're the resurrection that we've waited for. You buried the night and came with the morning. You're the king of heaven. The praise is yours. The longer the quiet, the louder the chorus. sing a new song cause death is dead and gone with the winner we will sing a new song let hallelujahs flow like a river we're coming back to life reaching toward the light your love is like springtime You're the living water 
God, we thirst for you. The dry and the barren will flower and bloom. You're the sun that's shining. You restore my soul. The deeper you call us, oh, the deeper we'll go. We will sing a new song, because death is dead and gone with the winter. We will sing a new song, let hallelujahs flow like a river. We're coming back to life, reaching toward the light. Your love is like springtime. Like springtime Come tend the soil Come tend the soil of my soul And like a garden And like a garden I will grow I will grow Come tend the soil, come tend the soil of my soul. And like a garden, and like a garden I will grow. I will grow. I will grow. Cause death is dead and gone with the winter We will sing a new song Let hallelujahs flow like a river We're coming back to life Reaching toward the light Your love is like springtime Like springtime Come tend the soil Come tend the soil, come tend the soil of my soul. And like a garden, and like a garden I will grow. I will grow. Come tend the soil. Come tend the soil of my soul And like a garden And like a garden I will grow I will grow And I say again, blessed are we who do not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but our delight is on the law of the Lord. And on his law, we meditate day and night. You are like streams of water. You are like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever you do prospers. Go and be prosperous in our Jesus Christ, our Lord. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>